Hi, this is James from Tabletop Gaming Guild, and today I get the rare privilege of talking about one of my favorite games, and this is going to be an expansion to one of my favorite games. So, Viticulture is a great worker placement game. I love Viticulture. I've played it a ton. It's one of my top 20 uh, board games of all time. It's one of my top 10 worker placement games of all time. It is a wonderful, wonderful, competitive worker placement game. I love how you have to develop your vineyard and complete orders in order to get those points to win the game. I like how you have to decide whether you're going to place your workers in the summer or the fall because once you've placed them in the summer, you can't place them in the fall. There's a lot of really cool, meaningful, awesome decisions that you have in this game. And it has a lot of great expansions uh, to continue the replayability of the game. Well, one of those great expansions is going to be change it to be cooperative and that's viticulture world did i ever dream that viticulture should be cooperative no uh do i have any did i have any idea before i got this expansion of how they could possibly make this worker placement game which is semi heavy especially to new players uh to new people to the hobby basically um uh, make it cooperative no uh, so let's go ahead down to the table here and I uh, give you a general overview of what this adds and all the components that it adds to the game. So let's go ahead down to the table, I'll show you that and then we'll come back and I'll give you my final thoughts. <music> All right, so this is Viticulture World. You get a lot of stuff with Viticulture World. This is a huge, 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 huge expansion. I uh, just want to point out just briefly that I really love the uh, linen finish. Really, really good paper quality uh, instruction manuals that Stonemaier Games puts out. And this is going to be the rules, but then you also have the separate uh, autonomous rules for Viticulture World. In addition to that, you're going to have a whole bunch of different uh, components that you're going to get with this game. First, you get a brand new board. This is a two-sided board. So depending on um, what expansions you add in uh, will depend on which side of the board you're actually going to use. So this is compatible with the expansions of Viticulture. And you also have the Autonoma cards and Autonoma Innovation tiles so you get to play solo. Uh, you also get these really cool hats. There's blue and yellow. These are for um, summer workers and fall workers, which we'll go over in a little bit. You get new, uh, more mama and papas. You'll mix those in with your um, existing mama and papas um, for your starting bonuses uh, for the game. You have these innovation tiles, which we'll go over in a little bit. Um, you also have an influence track marker, which is a maple leaf. This will go down here on your influence track. And you'll have an event. Um, <clears throat> you'll have an, an event token, which will be used throughout the game, depending on which one of these packs you pick. Now, a couple things I'm going to go over with the game before we get started. Here is, if you want, um, you can get a, and this will come if you order it through uh, Stonemaier Games. So if you order this through the Stonemaier Games website, you'll get this little booster pack. And this is a little booster pack. And this is for your first game of Viticulture. So this one is going to uh, be from the Charterstone universe. You already have one that comes with this game, but this is an even easier start first game one that is a little bit um, simpler to go through. And, and in, like both of them, at a certain point, it's like, here's points. So you can uh, try to... to uh, win your first game and get an idea how the game plays in addition to this they also have a free i think you have to pay shipping potentially but they have a free uh, replacement pack that you can get and what this replacement pack is it actually removes these two characters um, from the game so these were uh, spanish conquistadors and they're removed from the game um, and replace with other characters and their cards that reference them are too. The cards that replace them do exactly the same thing, so they don't change the gameplay at all. They just remove those people if you want that is available. Um, the object of this game 
is you have to get all of your players that are playing to 25 points. So at the end of the sixth year, everyone has to be above 25 points. And this influence track has to be at 10. Now, you also notice right here that that has an influence symbol on here. If you ever get your points up to that point, you get to bump up the influence track. Now, this will only occur once for each player. So if you get up here and then you lose points and go back up, you're not bumping the um, influence track up multiple times in the game. There is some changes to the game, but in general, it's going to still use the base rules for uh, Viticulture. They're one of the biggest changes um, to get used to. If you can watch our video if you want to learn more on base game of viticulture, but it, basically your worker beeples that you were traditionally allowed to put out in the summer or the fall uh, are limited at the start of the game. So at the start of the game, what you're going to do is you're going to place these hats on. Oops. Oh, I did not realize. Okay, you're going to place these hats on your workers here. And when you place these hats on your workers, they're limited to that region. You'll have two summer workers and two fall workers. So you'll have two with blue hats and you'll have two with summer hats. And what's going to happen is those are going to be limited to summer and fall. Well, that's not great. What are you going to do about it? Well, we're going to get into that. There's spaces on this board that you get to train your worker. So if I tra pay for Lyra here, I could train, this is in the fall space, I can train my worker and just simply just take off the hat. And once the hat is removed from the worker, the worker can be placed in summer or fall. So early in the game, you're going to probably want to do a lot of summer. Later in the game, you're going to probably want to do a lot of winter, depending on what you're doing and depending on your strategy. So I'm going to go over how a round will work in a second, but I did forget to mention that they have these cards here. Now, Stonemeyer Games came up with a really innovative way, or Jamie Stegmeyer did. Uh, basically, these cards here are exact replicas of existing cards that are in the game, okay? So, why do we have exact replicas of cards that are in the game? Well, these cards are incompatible with uh, Viticulture World. So, what you're going to do is you're going to go through, and if you have the expansions or the base games in the rule book, it's going to go through and it's going to show you uh, which expansions and uh, which, uh, what if it's a base game that these cards belong to. And you're, gonna, and you're going to replace the card that's in there and you could throw out the other card. You don't need it anymore ever. Well, why? Well, these cards are identical. There's absolutely no change except for now it has a black border around it instead of a white border. And what this is gonna do is when you flip this card and uh, get it, if you're playing Viticulture World, you'll just discard it and draw a new one. If you're playing the base game of Viticulture, you would draw it and you would play it like normal. So it's a really cool idea on how to handle that and be able to not have to have a lot of upkeep to switch between the cooperative version of Viticulture World and the competitive version of Viticulture. Even, uh, there's not even like um, board overlays, which I've seen people do for different expansions. I don't like those. I like the fact that this just came with a brand new board. So if you're gonna play the competitive version of Viticulture, you're gonna use that board instead. You will not use this board. All right, so just wanted to explain that part on here. Now we're going to get how the gameplay goes for Viticulture World. All right, so like I said, you're going to need to get your influence track up to 10 before the sixth year, and you're going to have everyone at at least 25 points. Well, you're going to start the game by picking one of these locations. In the rule book, it's going to show you uh, list the difficulty for each of them. If you got the... Uh, the, uh, the booster pack for your first game ever, you would play that one. Otherwise, uh, you would play this one here. And you're gonna keep these cards in order. It's gonna have a little bit of a flavor text about this uh, 
location. Um, the other ones in here have like historical facts about it, and each of the cards have different historical facts on the bottom of them for those locations. So if you look at it, here's a little historical flavor text, and then here's what the card does. So you're gonna read out loud the flavor text for this uh, module, and then here's gonna be the special setup rules. Now, you'll just go through this and set them up. Uh, some of those will require you to uh, find certain innovation tiles or do different things. Each one is different. Then you're going to put these in order. So there's going to be six because there's six years, right? So I'll put these in order. Then you'll flip the first card and put it here. You'll read out the flavor text. So this will give you some of them will give you history. This one will just give you um, uh, just like flavor text for uh, the Charterstone universe. And then this is an extra space that you can go to. Now, one thing I'll put out in this game here is there's going to be spaces that are only available if you're three to four players. And that's going to be these ones right here. This one's available only, uh, these ones are available if you're any player count. This one's only available if you're three to four. So all these spaces, if you're a two player, player count or less is only these first spots. So that's part of the setup. You're going to put your new car out for spring. Now these follow the same seasonal setup as the original game. These are the additions. So then you're also going to place up two innovation tiles. And well, two of the rectangular innovation tiles. I'm sorry, knocking all that stuff over. And two of these innovation bonus tiles here. All right. Now the wake up track works a little differently in this game. And we'll go over that in a second, but also note that in the setup instruction, you might put out this event token. So keep that in mind. And I will also point out too, before we get going into what you're going to do on your turn, is these are actually very, very, very different. These are pretty much completely different games on each of these modules. I really like how they did that. So there's a lot of replayability in these, this game, and these games get much much harder now it's recommended that you're going to put these in order however if you want to up the difficulty of the game you will shuffle this event deck that makes the game much 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 harder so there's a lot of different scaling of difficulty in this game you're going to use the uh the grape uh token from the base game and you'll place it here to track your years so I did my spring. You're also then going to, instead of uh, anything complicated, basically cooperatively, you're going to decide where you want to put your rooster on this track, and you will play in that order. So uh, you also have a gray worker here that I'm put out. But anyway, uh, once that's decided, you'll get the bonus that's listed here, and then you're going to go in turn order until uh, everyone passes. So a couple unique things that are going to occur. So I can place one of my workers wherever I want on here that's available. And then I get to do those actions. Now, two different things that can happen here is I could also place my grande worker out. And my grande worker out can go out regardless of whether there's people there or not. But another cool thing that happens that is different from Viticulture, the base game with this, is I can trade now. So if I go here, I can then trade one of any of these things to another player. So I can play, pay whatever amount of money I want to them. They can trade a card to me. Uh, I can trade one grape to them. They can trade one grape to me. So it's a one for one. So they can trade one. Well, actually it doesn't have to be one. I can just give them something and they can just give me something. But it's only one thing. So that is very important in this game that actually helps you out a lot. And a lot of the, what you're going to trade is going to be cards because in unlike in Viticulture where you have a seven card limit at the end of a year, you have a five card limit. So you have to discard down to five cards in Viticulture world. Now, as you're going through, you're going to place your meeples out for summer. And then when you pass, you're going to move your keeping it in the same place. So you keep your turn order into the middle for your fall. You'll also pick one of these three different bonuses. You'll either um, age a grape, you'll get two lira or you'll get a card. 
So pick one of those bonuses, you get it. Then we go into the fall phase. You can put stuff out into the fall phase. Uh, there's a couple, one of the biggest spots in the game is going to be upgrading this worker. It feels great to upgrade your worker, and it's extremely important to upgrade your worker in the game. Uh, this gives you the uh, flexibility of being able to place your worker where you want, uh, either in summer and fall. You also can um, gain one influence. So if you uh, trade in eight lira, you will get one influence on the influence track. Money is tight in this game, so eight lira is a lot of money to be spending in the game. But you do need to get this influence track up to 10. So that's one way uh, you will be doing that. The other thing is you can sell one wine uh, equal to it and get gain uh, lira equal to its value so that's really important too so that's another addition to this game one of the other places you could go to which is really nice is you can put an innovation tile down what do innovation tiles do well simply these big ones right here just make the spot that they're corresponding to because you'll notice that all these have letters on them better so this one here give a tour gain two lira if you upgrade this one now if you give a tour you gain two lira plus one layer per structure on your vineyard mat. So this just made this spot better to go to. These guys do a couple different things if you upgrade on them. If you put them over on one of these places, they will not only give you this bonus if you put a trained worker or your grande meeple on here. So the ones with hats won't get this bonus. If you put them there, you get this bonus. Also, any number of people can go to that spot now. So there's no limit on the meeples that are there. Additionally, one thing to point out for these ones, if you place it over one of these spots that have these um, this little icon here, you have to actually pay that to um, get that. So here I'd have to pay two lira to place this down. Um, here I'll actually gain it, uh, a point if I put it here. But either way, um, that is how that works. So those are the innovation tiles. They make spots better throughout the game. So it gives you more uh, opportunity to try to get these points before you get to your sixth season. After everyone's placed all their meeples down or passed for your fall season, you're going to do the year-end checklist. Now, one thing of note that is different on the Viticulture world over Viticulture is when you do your year-end, so when you're done placing your workers, uh, you immediately will pass. When you immediately pass, so when you're done, or if you pass, for in the fall, you're going to do your checklist on your turn. So what that means is other people will be playing, but you're going to be retrieving your workers. So this will actually open up spots that may have been unavailable to other people that are still playing, which is amazing. You'll age your... Uh, Grapes and wines, basically follow this year-end checklist. Discard down to five cards, collect residual payments, and advance the year marker. Now this is after all players have passed. So you will do one through four um, once you pass. The last player to pass will do advancing the year marker. Then you'll start a new year. So you will discard these innovation tiles, put new innovation tiles out, and flip the new card over and read it. Now. If you get an innovation tile during the game, you will actually not replace it. So the only time when new innovation tiles come out is spring. So just keeping that in mind. And that, in a super brief nutshell, is all of what is going on with Viticulture World. Let's go ahead back up the table here and I'll give you my final thoughts on this game. So the big question here is, does this work? Does this change a super awesome worker placement competitive game into a worker placement cooperative game? And I think it does. And I think it does an extremely good job of doing that. Now, this will keep the same one to six player count as the base game. And it takes actually, I think, uh, it takes about the same time, and maybe a little less time to play through a game of Viticulture when you play with the Viticulture World expansion. There's a lot of components that comes with this game. It almost makes me wonder if they should have made two editions of this. One 
that has Viticulture World expansion and one that is Viticulture World that includes the base game components or is a standalone. I don't know. There's a lot of stuff that comes with this. And you're just basically using um, the cards and some of the wooden components with the original game. And it's in the player boards and stuff. So, I don't know. I mean, I like this. It's a wonderful game. If you have Viticulture and uh, you want to have pretty much a completely new play experience, but have the same idea as the original game, I would highly recommend picking up Viticulture World for a couple different things. One is, all those different regions that you can go throughout in this game are super unique and they have they're a completely different game so there's a lot of games inside this one box and i can imagine that they could come out with expansions just for viticulture world that just add more regions that you can play through and maybe like booster packs or sort of like what they did for the first game booster pack if they ever came out with more of those you could just have pretty much on you know tons of replayability in here so you have tons of different regions you can play in this game and you can up the difficulty of those regions if you wanted to so there's something to get pretty difficult by shuffling them up before you put them out so they come out in random order instead of one two three four five six so a lot of stuff happens with these and it's amazing how some of the later ones pretty much change a lot of stuff to give you new challenges and make it harder and you are working together a lot in this game, which I like. So it is it definitely gives a feel of a super cooperative game. And you, there's enough moving parts on here that you're doing your own thing and cooperatively trying to win the game. So I think it mitigates if you're worried about the uh, quarterbacking aspect of some of the games like Pandemic or whatnot. I don't think this is going to be as prevalent in this game. So... What are some of the cool things that this adds? The innovation tiles are neat. <clears throat> they did, they're they really cool to upgrade those spots. It really depends on which ones come out of whether they're super valuable or not. Um, the one where it reduces the amount of Lyra it costs to train a worker coming out early in the game is amazing because you're like, I need to upgrade my worker thing for two Lyra instead of four. That is awesome. So, but if that comes in the later game, you're just like, eh. Eh, I would probably already upgraded my workers for the higher price. So the upgrade tells it just depends what comes out. It does change your strategy in the game. And my only real negative in the game is those arrow tiles. The the one where um, you can get arrows that I didn't explain it actually in the um, overview video, but some of the tiles where you place over and you can have unlimited workers on there, they have arrows. And what that arrow says is whatever the tile that's next to it in this direction you get that bonus and you could chain them up and have all sorts of things happen but uh they're very situational what can happen which is really cool is if you have two of those and you chain them then you have three different spots that you can go to to get that bonus which is pretty cool but i don't know how often that happens that was my only minor thing on here and if you I uh, weren't a fan of um, some of the stuff, uh, especially the uh, order fulfillment part where some of the cards are pretty random where you get the you get the easy ones at the end and the hard ones at the beginning. This didn't change that. Although trading cards in this game can help a little bit, um, but not, not entirely because, I mean, you still have those weaker cards, uh, but you could pass them or heavier, harder cards that you can't complete. And you have that five hand limit so you could be ditching those cards or potentially passing to a person that feels that they're working faster towards that goal so i do love the trading aspect that they add in this game uh, to be able to communicate and help each other out as you're going through you're basically uh playing solo and cooperative in this game because you are trying to get to 25 points but you're trying to get the team up to their uh 10 influence so as you're working through your own vineyard and trying to gain your own points and push yourself forward through the game, you're cooperatively trying to uh, push that influence up. And you might ask for help with getting points by being like, hey, can you trade me some stuff so I can um, be able to turn in this order or uh, be able to take this action space or whatnot. Um, take advantage of this action space. So overall, wonderful, wonderful game. And like I said, if you love viticulture and 
even if you love the culture and uh, you're not 100% sold on the cooperative part, I would still highly recommend playing this game because I think you will enjoy it and I think you will like it probably as much as I did it since I love Viticulture as much as I do. So that's my thoughts on Viticulture World. Thank you for watching.